It just looks like a hallway leading down to a set of stairs. Some nasty spikes up there. I'm not climbing over it for sure. Madeline said she used a bit of her essence to activate that circle, that this totem would zap spooks into it. Hey, how'd you get in? Ah, hello, miss. Answer my question. How'd you get in? Oh, the gate was open. Is that all right? Sure, I guess. Just be sure to close it when you leave. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Sad plants. Those plants are barely clinging to life. Dark and dusty. Can't tell what's in there. Frozen solid. Nobody's gonna have a picnic on that anytime soon. Frozen... Excuse me. Miss? Oh. Hi. What's up? You sure you should be out here? Why shouldn't I be? It's perfect. It's so nice to finally have a night clear enough to enjoy this place. Clear night. Right. You live here? I do. Why? No reason. Just making conversation. Is your name Heather Goffstein? Oh, I see. You came from Ray. Ray? Of course. You did come from Ray, right? Uh... No? No, sorry. I don't know who Ray is. Oh, uh, well, then I'm sorry. If you want a date, you'll need Ray's permission. A date? Isn't that why you're here? No, not at all. I just want to talk. Really? Really. Well, I suppose that's all right, but we should stay out here. If we don't go in the bedroom, then it's not a date. You don't seem terribly surprised that I'm here in your garden. Hmm. It is a bit strange you appeared out of nowhere, <laughs> but hey, I'm used to men appearing on my doorstep. And for some reason, you seem safe. Safe? Yeah, just a vibe. Huh. Thanks, I guess. So, tell me about this Ray character. I really shouldn't. Ray is really exclusive with the clients we're given. I shouldn't have told you the name. Hmm, the cops might know somebody about uh, something about Ray. So, tell me about this Ray. I Ray. Can you tell me about the Grace Group, Heather? Grace Group? Yeah, you were a member, right? Sorry, I don't know what that is. Come on, think. You met in the basement of Grace Church. What, like AA? I'm not an alcoholic, thank you. I have it on good authority that you were part of the Grace Group. I told you. I don't know anything about any Grace Group. Strange. Why would she not acknowledge that she was part of the Grace Group? Tell me about Father Michael Cooper. Father Michael? Is he a priest or something? Yeah, or something. He was part of the Grace Group. I don't know him. Sorry. Are you sure? He seems to know you. You don't meet many priests in my line of work. Or at least, if you do, they don't usually tell you. Do you know a Tanya Corsi? I don't think so. Sorry. You ever go to the Carth House? Dumpy place in Chelsea. I don't think so. Do you know a guy named Benjiro? I can't really say one way or the other. Sorry. I could get into trouble. Do you know a guy named Peter Fielding? Runs a gym in Murray Hill. I can't really say. I could get... So, tell me a bit about yourself, Heather. Can we not, please? Let's just enjoy the evening, okay? It's nice out here. Sure. No problem. Do you know a guy named Jim Peebles? I can't talk about who I might know. I don't want to get anyone into trouble. Especially me. Let's go take a look inside. Well, Heather, I have to get going. Sure. I'd leave the gate open, but for some reason, I don't think that will be a problem for you. Just a dark hallway. I can't see a thing in there. Hmm.
Okay, so now I know Ray. Yeah, I'm thinking the police are probably the best people to go to with that information. Officer Palmer? Yeah. Do you know anything about someone named Ray? I don't know who he is, but I think he's involved with prostitution. Prostitution? Is this related to Leah's case? I don't know. It could be. This just gets better and better. Anyway, Ray, let's take a look. Okay, the name Ray definitely comes up in the Vice Department database. There was a raid on a bar called Vantini a few years ago, and someone named Ray was taken in for questioning. No charges were made. Just Ray? No last name? No. Whoever Ray is, that's his full legal name. <laughs> anyway, here's the address of the bar if you need it. Thanks. Sure. Man, this game just gets bigger and bigger. Well, I'd better go. Thanks for the help. Sure. How can Ray be your full legal name? Is that even possible? It just seems bizarre. Don't you need a first and a last name? Yeah, look at that, they had to add another row. <laughs> yeah, the size of this game is really large compared to the previous ones. I remember the creator said... Or one of the creators, I guess. The main creator? I guess he'd be the main creator. Uh, said that this is the... By far the largest in the series. The largest game he's worked on, and that is certainly true. I can't see much, but it seems much warmer in there than it is out here. Will you look at this, Denise? Someone brave enough to join us in this weather. Well, brave or stupid, anyway. Uh, right. Was that a compliment? Maybe, maybe not. She must really like this place to be here in this weather. This bar is beautiful. It really is beautiful. Strangely lacking in tables, but really pretty nonetheless. They've got a pretty varied selection, although I wouldn't really know. My criteria for picking out wine is, has pretty label and under 20 bucks. Whoever this was, he signed it, thanks for the tie, with love, A.G. It's a painting of a woman dancing. It's dedicated to someone named Mistress B. Looks like some kind of promotional poster for a burlesque act. It's an emergency exit. Hi. Hey, what can I get for you? So what can you tell me about this place? It's old, quiet. I like it that way. Really? Yeah, I work on my thesis most nights. Honestly, I'm surprised a big place like this can stay open. It's always empty. Do you know Ray? Ray? Yeah, is he here? No, no, he is not. Okay, but do you know a Ray? Uh, I better not drink. I need to keep a clear head. How about a coffee or something? No thanks, I already have one. Hmm, I see. <laughs> yeah, I, I came into a bar with a drink already in hand. Little bit awkward. Do you know Heather Gopstein? Sorry, I don't. Well, thanks. I better get going. Excuse me. Hmm, yes? I'm looking for Ray. Do you know where I can find him? Ray, huh? And why would you be looking for Ray? I'm working with the police. Let's not say that unless I have to. Just need to have a little chat. I need to talk to him. I can't go into specifics, but it involves a woman who worked for him. Worked for him, hmm? In what capacity? She was a working girl, Heather Goffstein. She worked for Ray, and now she's dead. Hmm, I see. Worked is the appropriate word, I suppose. Heather left my employ a long time ago. Your employ? Yes. You want to speak to Ray? She's right in front of you. I suspect that. The former that. Rachel Mendez at your service. 
So you work here? Not directly, but I suppose I'm as much a fixture here as anything else. So Heather worked for you. Can you tell me about her? It's been, gosh, several years. I'm afraid I can't tell you much. She was very young. Very pretty. Slightly lost, perhaps, like many of my girls. She's really dead? How did it happen? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. Is this a police matter? Not directly. I'm working with them, but I'm pretty much on my own. Well, in that case, ask me whatever you like. You said Heather left your employee. Could you explain? Just that. She packed up and left. And you were okay with that? You think I would drag her back against her will? Absolutely not. And what would be the point? I replaced her the next week. It's the nature of this business. Some girls try the life, discover it's not for them, and then leave. Some stay for years and it grinds them alive. But occasionally, with luck and persistence, one can flourish, like I did. How does this business work exactly? There's no bedroom upstairs, if that's what you are asking. I own several apartments in the city. I give the girls room and board in exchange for the money they receive. Some of them skim. Hell, all of them skim. But I make sure to treat them well. They treat me well in return. Did Heather have any enemies? An obsessive client or anything? I suppose anything is possible, but not likely. I screen our clients very carefully, and I keep very careful records. If you kept careful records, does that mean you have a list of Heather's clients somewhere? No. I'm sorry, but no. Yeah, I kind of really need it. <sighs> Don't you want to know what happened to Heather? That client list could help. You have no reason to suspect one of her clients had anything to do with it. You can't even tell me how she died. I won't betray my client's trust based on a flimsy guess. Okay, so I need more. I really need that client list. Absolutely not. I give a premium product, and our clients expect premium service. Privacy is part of that service. That client list stays in my office where it belongs. In your office? Hmm. Well, I guess that's everything. Sorry I can't help you. For what it's worth, I like Tether. I'm sad she's dead. I suppose a drink to her memory is in order. Care to join me? Thanks, but no. Hmm. More for me, then. Denise! One gimlet, please. You know how I like it. I think Joey can take a peek in her office. Hopefully. Let's we'll see what's upstairs, though. This place is very... red. A painting of a woman in Victorian dress. Looks like the kind of place where old men would read newspapers. If people still read newspapers anyway. I know. Who reads a newspaper? Some vintage posters of a German crooner. Looks to be 50 years old. Some vintage post. I'm not here to relax. Ugh, no. I've been walking non-stop for two straight nights in the snow. I don't want to see how I look. Looks comfortable. Shame I'm not here for fun. I wonder why I can go up here. There's got to be a reason, because there's nothing up here to actually do yet. Maybe at some point I meet someone here. Joey? Uh-huh. Let's see what Joey thinks of his reflection. All I'll see is a whole load of nothing. Ah, oh, right. Ghost, remember? Doesn't look like anyone sat there for a long time. No idea who that guy is. She looks kind of old-fashioned, even by my standards. She can get out here. Ah, okay. That was gonna be my next question. Can Rosa get here? That door has got to lead back to the street. I think I'll try the main door first. What the? the oh.
It's a rag sticking out of a dumpster. <laughs> you sound excited, Joey. Tell me more about this rag. It's a rag sticking out of a dumpster. I'm not just gonna... <laughs> okay, fair enough. A trash dumpster covered in ice. A fire escape ladder. What am I supposed to do? Sing to it? You could try. A fire escape. I'm not just... Hmm. Ladder's a bit short. We don't have time to explore this place floor by floor. Yeah, what am I trying to do up here? Does she have an office here? Is that what I'm trying to get to? I suppose it doesn't matter. Or it doesn't matter right now anyway, because I can't even go up here. We don't have time. Must I... Hard to see inside. Oh, here we go. Okay. Tacky, but tasteful, I guess. Pictures of young women in interesting poses. Pictures of important looking people. I don't recognize any of them. A painting of a young and attractive woman in a state of undress. I don't recognize the model, but for some reason she looks familiar. Hmm. Give me just a second. I'm gonna add that to my list. Nice couch. I suppose it's comfortable if you care about that kind of thing. Just your standard trash can. Another one of those computer things. Looks like a bunch of phone numbers and addresses. Nothing relevant. Even if I could touch ghost, remember? Okay, so is there anything useful up, up here for me at all? Doesn't appear so. I'm not. I'm not. I guess there's nothing stopping me from doing that, except for my nearly complete lack of physical existence. Looks like another. Cute trick. <laughs> Apparently there's a door there. Door? It's completely seamless. If there's a door here, I can't find it. Hmm. There's gotta be a secret thing to press, right? Maybe a light? I should just leave those. I should just... I don't... I'm not... I'm not... I'm... It's completely seen. I'm not here. The mirror is. Hmm. I wonder how you open it. I really need to get Rosa in there. I have a question. You rang. Did Peter tell you anything useful when you spoke to him? Not sure. Maybe I should talk to him some more. I'm not here. All right, let's go speak to Peter. Huh, locked. Actually, you know, I should probably try leaving through the emergency exit. Maybe I could pick up that rag. Not that I actually know what I would do with it. What? It might just, like, trigger the alarm or something. It's, it's not a big deal. Can't exactly scare away your customers. You don't have any. Hey, Peter? 
Hey man, what can I do for you? So I'm told that you give personal training sessions. Yeah, are you interested? I sure am. Well, I don't have the time right now, but I can probably pencil you in. Just gotta check the schedule outside. Hmm, okay. Progress. Hmm, how about next Tuesday, say 11 a.m.? Sure, I think I can swing that. Great, here's my number in case you need to reschedule. You got a phone? Ah, no, well, I'll just remember it. Hmm? Okay, 646-555-0425. Thanks. Great, see you then. Okay, got his number. And by the way, when you come to our session, don't wear a suit. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose a suit's not very good for exercises. It doesn't really let you move around too much. It's kind of constricting. Hey, Pete. Hey, man. Wait, can I reschedule it? Say, can we reschedule that training session we set up? Sure, we can do that. Wait, so I can keep making him come outside? Why? I've got a slot for you next Thursday at 5 p.m. How's that? Sure. Sounds great. great. See you. Form looks great, Lisbeth. Just don't drag your feet. <laughs> Madeline said she used a bit of her essence to activate that circle. So, can I, like, put this down on here? That won't do any good. According to Maddie, this only... Right, I need to make him aware first. So how come I can keep having him come out here? There's got to be a reason for that. Hey, Pete. Hey, man. So, you run this place? Sort of. There's this TV producer, name of Jim Peebles. Do you know him? No, sorry, I don't. Do you know anyone named Ray? Sorry, I don't. So when's a good time to call you? Business hours are fine. Well, I'll... You got it. I'll be here. I just gotta see what's wrong with this damn light. Joey, could you come out here? What is it? Okay, I could call him. Yep, it's it's blah 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 for all the good it will do us. I mean, could I like find his apartment? Let's try calling him. Hey, this is Peter. You know what to do. Hmm. Officer. Yeah. Could you look up another phone number for me? I suppose I can, within reason. I'm trying to track down someone who Leah knew. The number is 646-555-0425. Alright, give me a second. That phone is registered to a unit in Murray Hill. Here's the address. Excellent. Well, I'd better go. Sure. The front door. It's locked. Typical. Joey to the rescue. That is really cool. I like how the scene's set up. You can only see the left side until you go inside and then the rest of it pops out. So, what? Who? Who the hell is she? And why is she in his apartment gorging on pizza? It's a painting of a young woman. No idea who she is. I can't smell them, but even I can tell those flowers are fake. Yuck, who knows how long that's been lying around. Oh, there we go, so I can get Rosa inside if I get that. Peter Fielding, gold member.
No good. The rug's too thick. Ah. <sighs> well, at least I succeeded in getting it on the ground. Hooray! She looks like she stopped caring about anything years ago. After seeing the state of this joint, Red's place doesn't seem so bad. Whoa. <laughs> There's a piece of pizza on it. Uh, New York City probation? Hmm. Dear Miss... Oh, of course, can't see your name. Case number... Ooh, I have a case number. As your probation officer, I am bound to report your absence from our meeting... Uh, meetings to the proper authorities. I understand your desire to get your head together after the events of the Karth House, but I'm afraid I must follow a formal process. Your next appointment is blah blah blah. If you attend this and every subsequent meeting promptly and in a proper spirit, I can have your absence from the previous appointments excused. Carol Nowick. Well, I can look at the case number. Should be able to get her name that way. And obviously she cited the Karth House. Which is the first time I've seen anybody actually connected to the Karth House in any way since Mary Sheehan. She shivered a bit, but no other reaction. No point, she can't hear me. She looks like she's... A painting of a country home, some kind of farm maybe? Looks quaint in any case. I think that's it. I'll just wait. I'll just wait. I got something to... Yes? Have I already said that I don't like working with the police? Not in the last 10 minutes. Well, I don't like working with the police. Does that case number mean anything to you? No, but if we can learn more about it, maybe we can learn more about the woman living in Peter's apartment. Officer Palmer? Yeah, yeah. If I gave you a parole case number, could you look up who it belongs to? I can't, no. Sorry. Mm. Yeah, it was worth a try. Thanks anyway. Okay. So what do I do with that case number then? Hmm. Well, I better go. Sure. I did see the name of the probation officer. I don't remember it, but it was on there. But it wasn't actually recorded in my notes, so maybe it's not important. I mean, I could search for their name online, but why would a probation officer be on just a general Google search? Actually, maybe they would. They might. I should probably do that. But before I do that, I will be right back. Alright, let's look up that name. Oh, coming. Oh yeah, I didn't yeah. consider the fact that I could do that. <laughs> Who are you? Uh... Who are you? Who's asking? I'm a friend of Peter's. So? So, I was hoping we could talk about him? Funny. I was hoping to be left alone tonight. Guess who wins? <sighs> Why is nobody ever happy to see me? <laughs> no, no. It can't be your copious amount of social grace. Oh, I'm excellent with people, Joey. Oh, coming. You again? Mm -hmm. What is it this time? I'm gonna keep it annoying you and tell me until you tell me. This is Peter Fielding's apartment. Why are you living here? Because I do? Now, please leave. Nope. Charming woman. Like a hedgehog, but without the winning personality. <laughs> oh, coming. You again? What is it this time? I'm looking into Peter Fielding's death. Did you know him? Look, I'm done talking about Peter. I've got my own problems. Just leave me alone. Nope. Oh, 
coming. You again? What is it? I'm working with the police. And? And I need to ask you a few things. I've already told the cops everything. I wasn't there. Just leave me alone. Uh, coming. You again? What is it? We really need to talk. It's very important. Well, I really need to get to watching this movie. We all have stuff to do. What if I knock now with no dialogue options? Uh, coming. You again? What is it this? You know what? Never mind. You know what? Suits me fine. <laughs> I'm just imagining me just standing here doing this for another hour. She'll never get to finish and watch that movie. But let's switch tactics. I can't touch him, but... Can I blow off the piece of pizza? I'm not just g No. I could search for the case number online. I don't think that would work. But anyway, Carol Nowick. Carol Nowick. Next appointment, case number, probation office. I could... Maybe I can go to the probation office. Yeah, I can try searching for the probation. Probation what? Probation something. 392 Broadway. Yes, I did just press two of the wrong options before pressing the only third and correct option. Let me make sure I spelled that correctly. I did. Let's look for New York City probation something. Services? No, I don't think that's what you're supposed to do. You know what to do. Also, just realized I have a new email. Hmm? Dear Miss Blackwell, I just wanted to reach out again. I am aware that this is a difficult subject, but if we are to prevent your aunt and grandmother's condition to resurface in you, we must take the proper steps. Please contact me and we can schedule an appointment. Wasn't this somebody I met in the very first game? I believe it was. Yeah, what was it? Like, our family has a history of... some sort of mental illness. But I... I think the reason... that there is a history is because... it's just because of us being... mediums. Right? And that's what makes us seem... mentally unwell or something? I vaguely remember that. Probation ID number. I wish the cop guy would tell me why he why he can't process that number and give me something useful. I mean, if he can't, then who can? woman living at Peter's. I wonder who she is. She doesn't like you much, that's for sure. Yep, that doesn't help me. Don't know who she is. I have a case number. I don't know how to find her name from the case number. I know the name for a probation officer. That doesn't seem to matter. So... I 
I could search for the case number. Again, I don't see what the point would... No, I, it's not even here. I mean, I could find the case number on that. On the picture, write it down and all of that. But no, there's no way. That wouldn't make any sense. Hmm. Back to work. Back out into the cold. So I can re again, I can keep having him reschedule and he comes out here every time, but what does that accomplish? I'm not sure what the point of that is. Well, I'm going to think on this and I'll be right back. Hmm. Bingo. The case number is listed in this file. There we it go. It belongs to a Maggie Fielding. It appears she was picked up in the raid on the Carth house. She was brought in for an emergency detox and forced to go into rehab. It lists one known family member, a brother, Peter Fielding. Oh, so that's her sister. Or, that's his sister, I mean. That makes sense. Combining the case number with the the files. Well, let's go pay her visit. Ugh, coming. You again? What is it this time? You're Peter's sister. Maggie, right? Sure. Fine. You got me. Why couldn't you just tell me that before? Because I'm trying to get healthy, working through the program, admitting I have a problem, just like my sponsor says. All that is the first step. I'm still working on the rest. Talking about Peter? That's step five. I'm not ready. It's nothing personal. I just need to avoid thinking about him for a while. And you're doing that by living in his apartment? It's just temporary. I have nowhere else to go. And besides, what difference does it make? He's gone. He had a stupid accident, and now he's gone. That's just it, Maggie. It might not have been an accident. No. Whatever you're thinking, no. I need this to be over, you understand? Then we need to talk. You can call your sponsor if you want to. <sighs> Screw my sponsor. Let's do this. So, talk. What are you watching? So, what are you watching? I don't know. Some animated thing. Not normally into cartoons, but the ratings say it's good. Is it? I guess. They changed the main character's voice after the first episode, but it's not bad. Keeps my mind off, well, the stuff you keep bringing up. Um, could you excuse me for just a sec? My shoe is untied. Sure, I guess. Thanks. Smooth. <laughs> I'm very, very quick at tying my shoes, apparently. Could you tell me about your father? He opened the gym, right? Sure. Could you tell me anything else about him? If you want to know about him, you'll have to ask him yourself. Here's his address. He's always home. Excellent, thank you. Can't you tell me anything about your father? I told you, ask him yourself. Why is Peter such a sore subject with you? That's between me and him, or his ghost, or whatever. It might help to talk about it. I'm still working through the program. Talking about it is step number five. I'm not ready for it yet. What do you know about Peter's death? Just what I was told. That he was fixing a light bulb and fell off the ladder. Mm. I remember thinking it was a pretty stupid way to go, especially for him. How do you mean? Did you know the guy? He was obsessed with health. To die just falling off a ladder? I always thought he'd outlive the world. That is an incredibly stupid way to go. No wonder he's always obsessing about a flashing light. And he thinks there's something wrong with it. <laughs> Isn't it funny? He spends so much time staying healthy, being a health nut, and then dying in the stupidest of ways that has nothing to do with how healthy your body actually is. It's ironic. And sad. Have you ever heard of the Grace Group? What, those circle jerk meetings my brother went to? You know about it. Yeah, I know about it. 
Peter was a mess before he joined that group. If you ask him, he would say it helped him find himself. Did it? Who knows? I thought it was a cult. Might have been better if it was. Why is that? Look, never mind. Peter found himself. Good for him. I just have to focus on myself. Do you know what happened at these Grace Group meetings? No. Peter never said, and I never asked. Do you know a Father Michael Cooper? Look, I don't need a priest. I don't need to be saved. I just need to get healthy. I'm not asking you to see him. I'm asking if you know him. Oh. No, I don't know him. Do you know Tanya Corsi? Well, I know she's on TV. Or was. Didn't she die? Yes. She was a member of your brother's gym. Really? You'd think she'd be working out in some fancy spa. Not my brother's crappy place. Wait, are you saying there's a connection? No, I'm just looking into it. Huh. Pete and Tanya Corsi. Now there's an image. Have you ever heard the name Benjiro? Benjiro? No. Sounds Japanese or something. I feel like I'm gonna have Benjiro in my list of clues for a very long time until I finally figure out who it is. Who is this mysterious Benjiro? How long was Peter working at the gym? Uh, about 20 years. Never thought he'd do it. Why? Don't know. He seemed to drift around for a long time. He was a teacher, waiter, construction worker, you name it. Then one day, he decides that taking over Dad's gym is what he has to do. Now the gym is a neighborhood staple. Made it more popular than Dad ever did. Good for him, I guess. Do you know a woman named Heather Goffstein? Nope. Never heard of her. Do you know a Jim Peebles? He's a producer for the Good Morning Show. I've watched the show. Never heard of the guy. Do you know anyone named Ray? I'm sure I might, but I can't think of anyone. Tell me about yourself. Uh-uh. Opening up is step number five. I am nowhere near ready yet. Well, I'd better get going. Sure. You know the way. Wait, why does it say Fielding Senior question mark? Hmm. Strange. Before I actually go there, I do want to go back to the gym and use my keycard to figure out what I can do in here with Rosa. It's a calendar with personal training bookings marked on it. It's just a number on the calendar. The marker is attached to the board. It looks like they use it to mark the date on this calendar. The month is written at the top in dry erase marker. Okay, so I'm going to be changing this, aren't I? Ooh! Yes, mark all the things. Look at this. Beautiful. All right. So I'm obviously going to be changing that to something. There we go. Nobody can say I don't do anything nice. <laughs> hmm. Connor Fielding. Why was that on the ground? Strange. Did that give me a note? No, it did not. I put it back on the wall. I guess search for that. Hmm. She looks pretty busy. She looks pretty busy. Just watching it makes me feel tired. <laughs> I don't need to use the locker room. I'm not here to work out. God, no. The men's locker room. Best I not go in there. It says members only. All right, let's go to Fielding Senior's house. Wait. This is Greenwood Cemetery. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> gotcha. 
Oh my god, even the water reflections look good. Water reflection? Pixel art water, water reflections. And they look gorgeous. Amazing. Amazing. I want to drink the water. Even though it's at a cemetery and probably contains traces of human remains, I still want to drink it because it looks beautiful. This tombstone is faded and hard to read. Hmm. Connor Lawrence Fielding, husband, soldier, father. And there's a date, which I'm guessing is going to be relevant to something. I talk with it. It's a little structure overlooking the lake. The exit isn't far. If I really need to get out of the snow, I'll just leave. There are a lot of family crypts in this cemetery, some going back a hundred years. There are a lot of... Quaint little thing, I guess. Some family's crypt. It's too chipped and faded to read. I got something to say. What is it, Joe? Man, I hate places like this. Let's just do what we need to do and get out of here. Have some respect, sweetheart. The dead got enough problems without you trampling all over them. Sorry. I'm not trampling all over them. What are you talking about? I'm offended. Connor Fielding. Dead and buried? Mm-hmm. March 18th, 1993. Well, I could set the calendar to March 18th. That would probably... Probably... Snap him back. Let's do it. March 18th. The month is written. Hey, Peter? Hey, man. Say, can we... Sure. I think this is gonna be it. He's gonna remember. I think. I hope. Come on. Come on. Hey, Miss, you're dripping water on the floor. <laughs> oh, um, sorry. No problem. Just be sure to put on sneakers or something if you want to work out here. Anyway, let's check the schedule. Huh? Is that the date? Hey, listen, I'm sorry, but there's an appointment I've gotta keep. Can we sort this out another day? Sure, no problem. Thanks. Well, I know where to find him. Um, excuse me. Hey, look, I really want to be left alone right now. Sorry. Hey, Peter? Oh, hey, look, I really want to be left alone right now. We'll talk later, okay? Sure. No problem. He hasn't quite accepted it yet? He needs to be spiritually aware before I can use this. Okay. So... What do I do now? Get over here, I got some... What is it, Jack? Is it just me, or does Maggie scream daddy issues? Maybe. Whoever her father was, we should find out more about him. More about him. I can call his phone. Hey, this is Peter. Okay, well, I suppose I can always go back and ask the cops. Always a good source of information. Except when it's a probation case. Oh. 
Officer Palmer? Yeah. Is there anything in the system about a Jim Peebles? Let's see. Nope. Whoever he is, he's clean. Not surprising. So you don't know anything else about Ray? Nope. Sorry. Do you have any information on a Maggie Fielding? Let me check. Maggie Fielding. Yeah, she was picked up in a raid not too long ago. A raid? A drug den in Chelsea. Some dump called the Karth House. I know it. Huh. Of course you do. Anything else? Just that she and about a dozen others were sent to the hospital for a detox. They were processed and let go. That's it? That's it. Is there anything in the system about a Connor Fielding? He died about 20 years ago. Let's see. Our records from back then are a bit spotty, but can't hurt to check. No, nothing comes up, but it's a very common name. Is there anything specific you can tell me about him? He was in the army. Oh. Then there might be something in the Veterans Association records. Aren't those public? Not everything. But fortunately for you, I can access everything. Okay. Archived records. Connor Fielding. Oh, seriously? What's wrong? Idiots. They had no idea how to archive data back then. I can only look them up by service number. You don't know it, do you? I do, actually. It's 070-234-541. Well, that's handy. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Connor Fielding. Served in Vietnam from 1966 till 1969. Honorably discharged. Moved with his family to New York a few years later. Huh. That's interesting. What? It says here that the police were called to his apartment several times. Reports of raised voices. Possible domestic abuse. No charges were pressed, which is why it wasn't in our police records. But it's in the military database? Word gets around. Someone must have noted it in his VA file. Doesn't say much else. Hmm. Yep, suspicion of domestic violence. Well, I'd better go. Thanks for the help. Sure. Hey, Peter? Oh, hey, look, I... Sure. I still don't have enough? I have a question. Yeah? You think what Corey told us about Connor was true? He's got no reason to lie, but we should confirm the story just in case. I guess I'll go talk to Maggie. Oh, coming. Oh, sure, come on in. Wait, your father is dead. Wait, she doesn't... Does she not know her father's dead? Can't you tell me anything about your father? I told you. There are things I don't talk about. So your father is dead? Yep. Okay, Why didn't you just, just say that instead of sending me to the cemetery? The only person to visit Dad was Peter. And he can't do that anymore. I figured Dad could use the company. Really? No, not really. I told you, there are things I can't talk about yet. You said Peter visited the cemetery? Once a year, on the anniversary of Dad's death. Peter was a damn saint. I learned a bit about your father. You did? The police were called several times to his house. No charges were made. It's not hard to read between the lines. Huh. Well, I suppose you know everything now. I don't. But I'm trying to. Why? Why do you care so much? What does my father beating the crap out of my mother have to do with how Peter died? There's something bigger going on. That doesn't matter. I can't take on anybody else's problems. I'm barely dealing with my own. I've been trying to forget this crap my whole life, and now I have a chance. I'm not going back to that. I'm sorry. I know you think you have good reasons, but I really need to be alone right now. Listen. Please, leave. Okay. <sighs> you
You have such a way with people. Are you still here? Just leaving. Where are you going? To visit my precious father. Not that it's any of your business. My neighbors are kind of twitchy. You'd better get out of here before someone calls the cops. Here we go. This should do it. She seems less angry than she was before, but not by much. He's definitely lost in thought. I shouldn't talk to ghosts with Maggie standing there. This oh. place is spooky enough. Good point. <laughs> Maggie. Huh? Huh. I had a feeling you'd follow me here. I didn't follow you. You got here after I did. You're not gonna leave me alone, are you? You know I try and help you whenever I can. Not until I spill everything. I've never pressured you to talk to me, Maggie. Although God knows maybe I should have. I'm sorry, but it's important. Maybe it's because I'm out of that stuffy apartment. Maybe it's because when I'm here, I know he's really gone. I know. I miss him too. Talking about it. The fifth step. My sponsor said I didn't have to do them in order. Many people don't. I guess now is as good a time as any. I'd like that, Maggie. I really would. So, talk. Tell me about your father. It's not about him. Not really. It's all wrapped up with Peter. It's always Peter. What are you talking about? What did Peter do? Nothing. Everything. Maggie, what are you talking about? He took over my dad's gym, made it successful. I hated him for it. Wait, what? Don't you remember how miserable I was? Drifting from job to job, hating all of them. Running dad's gym was something I was good at. I thought you'd be happy for me. Didn't Peter have lots of jobs he hated before he started working at the gym? Couldn't you be happy for him? Happy? Happy that he took my father's name and made it revered? I don't see the problem here. The people in the neighborhood love that gym. They come by and say what a nice old man Connor Fielding was. And what a shame he died. And how nice that his son took up his legacy. Legacy. A legacy of bruises and hiding in the dark. Bruises? What are you talking about? You always believed her when she said she was clumsy. It was like some horrible after-school special. Maggie. You are not saying what I think you're saying. You never knew, did you, Peter? So wrapped up in yourself. You never saw what he was doing. Why didn't you ever tell me? Mom hid it from both of us. And I was too scared to say anything. In the end, it was just easier to say nothing. And hate you. And now it's too late. For what it's worth, I don't hate you anymore, Peter. But I need to get on with my life. Goodbye, brother. Goodbye? What do you mean, goodbye? Um, sorry. I should go. Maggie! Wait! Maggie! I never knew! I swear! I never knew! I just don't understand. I... Huh? My god. I'm sorry, Peter. I remember. The ladder. It broke. Oh, man. I don't feel so good. Right. We don't have a lot of time. Peter, I need you to grab a hold of this. What the heck is that thing? No time. Just grab. Well, that was close. Did it work? Let's get back and find out. Yes, it did. Hey, look who's here. Pete's safe and sound. Safe as a dead guy can be, anyway. Sorry, I know this is not exactly the reunion we expected after all this time. But you have no idea. I thought you were... Well, I explained that already. So, Madeline, you got your spook. What have you learned? It is interesting. This spirit is experiencing what would be considered nausea in a living person. It figures. I've never had a stomach virus in my life until I died. He is being pulled. There is the signature of another spirit at work. A signature? Yes, I can see it. It is faint, but I can see it. 
Only the power of this circle is stopping it from gaining a foothold. Unfortunately, it is too faint for me to see anything useful. And we dare not lower the circle. I need to examine another soul. One that is marked like this one. And by another soul, you mean Heather, don't you? Heather? Is she involved in this? We all are, Pete. We all are. This is all too much. First my sister, now. It won't be much longer. One way or the other, we'll finish this. Okay, I need to work on Heather. Madeline? Yes, Blackwell. Joey told me about how you helped him out of the void. We helped each other. Well, even still, if you weren't there, well, I don't know what would have happened. The hole in the universe caused by the severed link would have consumed you. Your mind would have collapsed under the pressure, leaving you a raving madwoman. Oh. Right. Um, well, thanks. <sighs> My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you extra much, then. You once told me that you knew my Auntie Lauren. After a fashion. While in the void, I could reach out to the mortal world in dreams. The minds of other bestowers were the most... receptive. Huh? If that's true, how come she never mentioned it? Sadly, the memories of our meetings faded as she woke. What did you talk about? You and Auntie, I mean. You have to understand, she was dreaming while we conversed. Her mind wasn't entirely lucid. So you can't tell me anything? Nothing that would make any cognitive sense. Do you know what happened to them? To Auntie? To my grandmother? They both went insane. They spent years sedated in a hospital. Do you know why? I do not. I felt their minds when they... went. But that is all I know. I see. Do you think the same thing will happen to me? What happened to my aunt and grandmother, I mean? I am sorry, I do not know. But I do believe your chances of safety are high. You really think so? Why? I told you. While I was in the void, I could sense their minds. I could sense yours as well. You are stronger than they were. Well, that's something at least. I'm... stronger? Not physically, or even mentally. But emotionally, yes. Your grandmother fled the duty. Your aunt performed it with only the greatest reluctance. But you? You have embraced it. Thrived in it. Well, it's what I do. I've always wondered, just who are you? Pardon? Where'd you come from? Who you were before all this? Tell me one thing. Have you ever asked your spirit guide the same question? Yeah. Has he ever given you a satisfactory answer? Precisely. So why not, though? I guess we should get going. Of course. Keep us informed of your progress. Peter? Oh, hi. Rosangelo, was it? Yeah, that's me. Mike's been telling me about you. So, you've been doing this a while, huh? For about four years. These days, it's pretty much all we do. I don't envy you, but I'm glad. Father Michael? Yeah? Is there anything else you can tell us about Heather? Anything at all? I just know she was a prostitute when she went to Grace Group meetings. I don't know what's happened to her since. Yeah, I don't think I have anything new to talk about. Do I? Pretty sure I talked about these things. You knew George Austin, right? Yeah. Years ago, he was... God, you should have seen him. A total mess. He looked like a street bum. I don't think he'd showered in weeks. Ugh. But that was George. He only put effort into the things he cared about. The Grace Group helped him find what that was. I heard he became an art dealer. Yeah. None of us could believe it. George, least of all. He always used to say that he would never have discovered his calling on his own, and he would have wasted his entire life not knowing. <sighs> I used to feel the same way. Leah was part of the Grace Group, right? It was over 20 years ago, but yes. She was a secretary at the time, I think. She was childhood friends with George Austin, and she brought him to the meetings, hoping to help him out. Turns out it helped both of them. She quit her job and joined the police force. She said the Grace Group helped her find her way. I suppose, until now, it did. Are you familiar with Emil Haskins, Leah's ex-husband? Sadly, no. Leah and I lost touch years ago. I didn't know she had even married in the first place until recently. But I feel for him. 
Do you know, there's no word for a parent who loses a child. The prospect is so unthinkable, we can't even name it. Did you know Leah's daughter, Kendra? My god, I heard what happened. Madeline told me that her soul passed on peacefully? That she's where she is supposed to be? Yes, she's fine. I see. You have my thanks for that. I guess we should get going. Godspeed. Yeah, it's time to go talk to Heather. Got a sec? You rang. What do you suppose is on Ray's computer? You're asking me? You're the one with the fingers. Go let him walk. Or maybe we're supposed to go to Ray's place. I do think I need more information to possibly do anything with Heather. I, yeah, I don't have enough, do I? What do you- You're asking- Oh, whoops. I How is that oh. even possible? Hey, good to see you guys again. Madeline here was just telling me the funniest story. Hmm? My host, please. Right, right, sorry. Uh, what? What's the story? Madeline? Yes. <sighs> I guess we should- Of course. I'll never know. <laughs>